सो ए वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ साहिल गौरव आई एम पी एम आर एफ टी ए फॉर दिस कोर्स एन पी टी एल कोर्स ऑपरेशन एंड प्लानिंग ऑफ पावर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम सो बेसिकली वाट आई विल डू आई विल डिस्कस द क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन द योर असाइनमेंट्स दैट विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल इन सॉल्विंग द असाइनमेंट्स एंड इट विल ऑल्सो हेल्प्स यू हेल्प्स यू लॉट इन द फाइनल एन पी टी एल सर्टिफिकेशन एग्जाम so i will float some i will float questions and we will solve parallelly while i am solving you are, you, you, you can also solve parallelly with me and just uh, take pen and paper out so that you can solve with me and you uh, i will give some options and based on the options you can type your answer in the chat box okay all right so today uh, let's start today's session with the first question so uh, in the beginning we will solve some some theoretical question and at the end uh, we will take more numerical type questions so the first option is like this is asked about distribution network among the four options which one is the correct if this is asked about distribution network so distribution net first option is distribution network are usually operated as radial and second option is distribution networks are usually unbalanced as compared to transmission networks and c option is distribution networks are usually suffer from more faults as compared to transmission networks and d is all of these so what do you think you can type your answer in the chat box so i got uh, many responses okay many of our many of you are saying d so yes so d is the correct answer for this and if you have gone through the sir lectures the this nptel course video lectures so you can fi uh, find from there that what is the difference between transmission and distribution networks so these are the features why uh, in the view of topological transmission networks are of mesh type and the distribution networks are of radial so first option is also correct and the second is distribution networks are usually unbalanced as compared to transmission networks so yes it is also correct that transmitter networks are relatively balanced in comparison with the distribution networks and the third option is distribution networks are usually suffer for more faults as compared to transmission networks yes it is more fault for prone as compared to this transmission networks so it is more fault prone networks so the correct option will be d all of these so now let us see the next question question number 2 so the second question is the utility voltage implies two options are sub transmission level voltage distribution level voltage and third c option is voltage at which load consume powers and d option is all of these so what do you think uh, which one will one will be correct you type you can type your answer in the chat box and meanwhile if you face any problem while solving this questions you can ask and interfere me in the between and you can also ask in the last i will give some times at the last so that you can ask the questions about this tutorial and in the related to assignment so the utility voltage implies to the voltage at which the consumers takes the power so the options will be c so 
so the correct option is C this means the voltage at which the load consuming powers at which uh, customers demand takes powers from the utility that voltage implies to the utility voltage now let us see the next question so the third question is the starting point of a primary distribution network is options are a substation b distribution transformer c generating station and d is secondary distribution network so this one is also a very easy question and for the basic power networks you should know about this about the answer of this question So many one, many of you are giving the options B. So it is asking about the starting point of a primary distribution network is. So if you see the our power dist our power system hierarchy, that first one is generating station, and then we have transmission system, and from there sub transmission system, and then we have primary distribution network. And primary distribution, what does it? It it connects from the substation to the dis distribution transformer. And secondary distribution, what does it does? It provides the networks which uh, connected through distribution transformer to the end user or customers. So the starting point will be the substation where the voltage level drops down from the transmission line voltage to the distribution level voltage and usually this one is 11 kV or 33 kV. and this one connects to the distribution transformer and then we have secondary distribution network that connects to us like individual individuals or customers and the voltage level for this it's better to write voltage level here in this network Eleven kV, thirty three kV, and these voltages are voltages are line to line voltages. And 
and this one is 400 volt three phase and in a USA like if you see that this voltage level lies to 110 120 volt but in India we having this two 400 volt three phase that is line to line voltage VLL and single phase be having 220 to 230 volt single phase phase voltage so the in this question it is asked about the st starting point of a primary distribution network so what will be the correct option S substation so the correct option is a now let us see the question number four the end point of a primary distribution network is so just before i discussed about this so what will be the correct option for this question number four you can type your answer in the chat box so that i can see B option is correct distribution transformer. Yes, Ravinder Bahel, do you have any question? No, no. So, to, okay, and Angad? Angad, do you have any uh, doubts? If you don't have any doubts, then you can just lower down hands. No, sir, no doubt. Okay, fine. So this. So the correct option is four. As you, many of you have given the correct answer for this question. So now let us see the question number five. Question number five is a radial distribution feeder of 35 nodes consist of means if a, distri a radial distribution network having 35 nodes then you have to tell how many how much distribution lines will, will be present in that feeder. So basically I just want to tell that in radial distribution system In the real distribution systems, number of nodes is equal to number of lines plus one. So, this one is very important. So from there, you can find out the number of distribution line present in the radial distribution network. So you have been given a 35 number of nodes. Then you need to calculate the number of distribution lines. Plus one. Then it gives you as 30 number of distribution lines as four, 34. So the correct option for this question number five is C. Now let us see the next question. Question number six is the power, the power demand of the flowing load is proportional to a square of voltage. In options, there are different types of leads given as and you have to find you have to tell about the which load will demand demand the power according to personality of a square of voltage so this has been also taught in the course and you can easily give answer if you have gone through these lectures
so for this question uh, i want to know how many of you uh, know uh, know the answer of this question so you can type your answer in the chat box so i got some of the responses petro rana angad surbhi they have given answer as c yes the correct answer for this question is c butter heaters and the theory behind this question is that we having different types of loads uh, uh, and if we categorize the loads based on the dependency of voltage we having three types of loads as constant power load constant current load and constant impedance impedance loads constant power load in which the power is constant regardless of voltage an example the example of this power uh, constant power load is electrical motors motors so it, it, it is asked from and in this question it is asked about this only so the correct option will sorry uh, it is not asked this electrical motors <laughs> it is asked about this constant impedance load so this power is proportional to voltage squared so the correct option the, and examples are given as resistive butter heaters so the correct option will be c and we see the constant current load in which the power is proportional to voltage If you write out the power is proportional to V into I, and if you suppose if you in decrease the voltage, then it will demand more current. And suppose if you have increased the voltage, then it will demand less current. So it is dependent of voltage level. So power is constant regardless of voltage, and in this constant current load. since current is constant then it is directly proportional to voltage and the examples for this constant current load are welding units smelting and electroplating processes and now last one is constant impedance load so we know that i is equal to v divided by z so putting this i is equal to v divided by z you get v square divided by z since the impedance is constant so you will get power is directly proportional to v square so the correct option for this question is resistive butter heaters in which the power uh, power is proportional to the square of voltage let us see the next problem so this in this question it has been asked about the which value of load factor is preferable to utilities near to infinity near to zero near to 0.5 and near to 0.25 so this one is a very uh, good question and uh, what do you think what should be the load factor that will be preferable for utilities preferable for power plants preferable for power generation companies you can type the answer in chat box okay a abhinav misra john patel petro and chandra dhara so we know that load factor is is the average demand average load demand divided by peak demand
so so if this one is equal to unity then whatever the average demand from the utilities it is equal to peak demand and we know that the uh, the cost per unit generation depends upon this depends upon this load factor so here i have written down this load so i think someone wants to join so uh, load factor plays key role in determining this overall cost per unit generated so the higher the load factor of the power station the lesser will be the cost per unit generated so a low load factor means higher maximum demand and low utilization rate because the capacity of the plant is more but it is not utilized at full level because the average demand is low so it should be the equal to the means nearly should be equal to the average demand so it is it is always preferable for load factor it should be near to the unity and suppose if the load factor is very low as high peak demand the capacity of electrical energy remains inactive for the for a long time as i said that that if, uh, peak demand is very lower so the what uh, most of the capacity of plant is unutilized so it remains inactive for a long time so it will increase the overall cost per unit generated so the utilities don't want this so the always it will want this what should be the scenario that average demand should be nearly equal to the peak demand and so this will increase the cost per unit cost of electrical energy to consumer and to reduce the peak demand shift some load from peak demand to non peak non peak time so these are the some techniques to increase the load factor and this improved load factor means to reduce the peak load demand and it will also reduce the average cost per unit and this procedure is known as load balancing or peak saving so the correct option for this question is c sorry a near to unity and eighth number question is the load factor of domestic load is so it is a data type of question so i just i will tell you that what's the typical scenario of load factor for different types of load so these are the data like we have divided the loads in basically into four categories domestic commercial industrial agriculture and based on, on different types of load we having this range typical range for this demand factor diversity factor load factor and the in this question it is asked about the load factor of domestic load so load effect of domestic load is very poor 10 to 15% so the correct option for this question 8 is a and the highest lo uh, load factor is for the industrial it means that average demand is uh, not equal means average demand is uh, nearly equal to this maximum peak demand 60 to 65% for industrial load and for commercial 25 to 30% and agriculture just above the domestic loads let us see the next question so this in this question there is a lighting lighting load which is operating from 6 pm to 6 am daily at constant demand of 100 kilowatt the load demand for the rest of time of the day is zero the load factor of this load is so you can solve also parallelly with me we know that load factor is average demand load factor is the ratio of average demand divided by the peak demand 
just we will use this formula and we will get the answer So the average demand will, will be so it is given as it is operating from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So it is operating for 12 hours and the, to get the average load demand it should divide by 24 hours. So we will get the average demand and divide the peak demand and the rest of times it is zero which is non operating. So there is no need to uh, consider that and peak demand will be 100 because it is the only load so how much you will get value 0 0.5 this one is very simple question so correct option will be C okay all right so next let us see the next question next question is the it is asked about the load curve and load duration curve. You have to tell about the which one is the correct. And the first option is that area under load curve is greater than the load duration curve. And the B option is that area under load curve is lower than that, that of load duration curve. And the C option is area under load curve is equal to that of load duration curve. And D option is that it is half of the load area of under load curve is half of that of the load duration curve. So what do you think? You can give your answer in the chat box. See Chandan Kumar, Manish Kumar, Pail Kumari. So we know that a load curve is the curve between the demand and the time duration and the load duration curve just be taking the like the first we arrange for the peak demand and then just decreasing the load demand and drawing it in the through the time scale so both area will be constant and both will give the give the amount of energy consumption area under load curve is equal to the area under the load duration curve and what will what do, um, both tells about the both will give the what amount of the energy consumed it tells about the energy consumption so the correct option is C as many of you tell the correct answer so let us see the next problem next problem is a residential customer consumes one kilowatt for two hours. Sir, back kariyega. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, fine. So, next question is: a Residential customer consumes one kilowatt for two hours, seven fifty watt for. 8 hours and 300 watt for rest of the day the load factor for this load is so load factor will be
एवरेज डिमांड डिवाइड बाय पीक डिमांड सो इन दिस फर्स्ट वी कैन कैलकुलेट द एवरेज डिमांड सो द एवरेज डिमांड विल बी सो एवरेज डिमांड विल बी द यूनिट कंजम्पन डिवाइड बाय द नंबर ऑफ आवर्स generated or consumed consumed divided by number of hours so from here you will get 1 kilowatt for 2 hours plus 750 watt for 8 hours so you can you just use the same un, same units so 0.75 kilowatt for 8 hours plus 300 watt for rest of the day so how much hour left so 2 plus 8 10 hours plus 20 uh, 24 minus 10 is equal to 14 hours so it will give this much divided by number of hours this will tells about the daily average demand so it will give out 12.5 So, so just put these all values you will get two plus six plus four point two divided by twenty four and this this one gives you 12.2 divided by 24 so this will gives you 0 0.508 this one is the average demand so 0 0.508 kilo, kilowatt is the average demand and what is the peak demand 0 0.508 kilowatt so this is the unit of this average demand is 0 0.508 kilowatt and the peak demand is 1 kilowatt so the load factor will be 0 0.508 so the correct option for this question 11 is a I hope you all got this question. Now let us see the next problem. I think here I should. So the next problem is a distribution feeder consists of five residential consumer customers. Then the peak load demands of these customers are 25 kilowatt, 75 kilowatt, 150 kilowatt, 100 kilowatt, and 50 kilowatt. Total connected load of these customers is 1000 kilowatt. The coincidence factor of these loads is 0 0.7. Demand and the first part of problem is demand determine the peak demand of the feeder. And the options are given as shown.
so for this question it is in uh, the peak load demands for all these customers have been given but what is the peak demand of the feeder it is not given as we all know that the individual peak load demand differs but the coincidence coincidence demand differs from this individual peak demand so first we need to find out this in the first question that only the peak demand of feeder what is the peak demand of feeder and that we can calculate from the diversity factor so we know that diversity factor diversity factor in the ratio of in the ratio of sum of individual peak demand sum of individual peak demand sum of individual peak demand divided by the group peak demand or aggregated peak demand this is also called as coincidence demand so we can write it as and we also know that the coincidence factor is just just reciprocal of this diversity factor one is coincidence factor coincidence factor so what will we will do we will put the we have been given coincidence factor given coincidence factor as 0.7 so coincidence factor is zero point seven so from diversity factor we can also find out so diversity factor we can write it as one by coincidence factor and it can be write as i is equal to one to n pi max divided by group peak demand so from here we will get one divided by 0 0.7 sum of individual peak demands are 25 kilowatt plus 75 kilowatt plus 150 kilowatt plus 100 kilowatt plus 50 kilowatt divided by pgr that we need to the find so it's better to write pgr is equal to p feeder P feeder max. So from here you will get P feeder max maximum value is this one gives you 400. So 400 into 0 0.7. So it will comes out at 280 kilowatt. 
so the correct option is C so how many of you have solved this correct I don't know okay many of you have replied first B second A second A first D first V Okay, this is the correct answer for this question number 12. This is 280 kilowatt is the peak demand of the feeder. And the next question it is asked that what is the demand factor of the feeder? Demand factor we know that maximum demand is the ratio of maximum demand to the total connected load. So we can write demand factor in the ratio of maximum demand maximum divided divided by total connected system. total connected load so in this question you can see that total connected load of these customers is given here 1000 kilowatt so as we have defined this maximum demand of the feeder so we can easily find out the demand factor the maximum demand of the feeder is 280 kilowatt and total kilo total connected load is 1000 kilowatt so what will be the ops what it, it comes out to be 0 0.28 so the correct option is b 0 0.28 I hope you all got this question so let us move the next move to the next question next question this question this next question also belongs to this question number 12 is so question third is determine the load diversity of the factor so we know that load diversity is the subtraction between the sum of individual maximum demand minus the group peak demand So you, you just also solve parallelly with me. Load diversity of feeder. Load diversity of feeder is sum of the individual is the subtraction between the sum of individual peak demand minus group peak demand. minus p group and group means the uh, maximum demand of the feeder so we, we have already calculated this comes out to be 400 minus 280 kilowatt so this will be the load diversity of the feeder 120 kilowatt so the correct option is D 120 kilowatt and the fourth part of this question number 12 is determine the diversity factor of the feeder so we know the diversity factor is the reciprocal of coincidence factor so just diversity factor is the reciprocal of coincidence factor and in this question we have given coincidence factor as 0 0.7 so it will come out to be 1.428 so approximately equal to 1.43 so the correct option is a so let us see the next problem 
नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम इज इज द ए पावर स्टेशन सप्लाई द लोड एज गिवन बिलो एंड दिस फ्रॉम दिस डेटा यू नीड टू कैलकुलेट द लोड कर्व एंड फाइंड आउट द लोड फैक्टर सर बैक करिएगा फोर पॉइंट में डाउट है यस डिमांड एंड दिस टाइम ड्यूरेशन सो लेटेस्ट ट्रा द लोड कर दिस गिवेन डेटा let divide it as here this demand as 1.0 this as 2.0 and the maximum demand in this question is given as 2.3 so it will not go above 3 so b right is 3.0 is the maximum demand so all these data is given in megawatt so this one by axis is load demand and this x axis we just plot the time duration so it will start from 6 am so let us divide this is as six parts so 6 to 10 am 10 to 2 pm just give the gap between 4 hours duration so 4 to 6 pm 6 pm to 10 pm 10 pm to 2 am and 2 am to 6 am now now from 6 am to 8 am we can see that demand is 1.2 megawatt so it will start from just above just above 1 megawatt so till 8 am 1.2 megawatt and from 8 am to 9 am it goes to 2 megawatt 2 megawatt and from 9 to 10 it is 3 megawatt so 9 to 10 it is 3 megawatt and from 10 to 12 it is 12 megawatt sorry 3 megawatt and 12 to 2 pm it is 1.5 so it comes just in middle of that 1.5 1.5 megawatt and 2 pm to 6 pm it is 2.5 megawatt and then 6 to 8 it comes a 1.8 6 to 8 1.8 and 8 to 9 2 and 9 to 10 1 megawatt and 10 to 11 it is 1 megawatt and then 11 to 5 am it is 0.5 then it also bend down 11 to 5 am 
so 5m it goes till last and then 5m to 6m 0.8 megawatt so this is like that so in this question we need to find out the load factor so first we will see that how many number of units generated by this power station so that we can calculate the average demand so units generated during 24 hours by the power plant during 24 hours so what you need to do just uh, multiply this power demand into number of hours so 1.2 into 2 plus 8 am to 9 am 1 into sorry put our this right hand side so 2.0 into 1 plus 3.0 into 3 plus 1.5 into 12 to 2 p 12 into 2 pm 2 then 2.5 into 4 and then plus 1.8 into 2 and then 2.0 into 1 plus 9 pm to 11 pm so it is calculated so 11 pm to 5 am 6 0 0.5 into 6 number of hours plus 0 0.8 into 1 number of hour the unit will be megawatt hour so this will give you guys 37.8 megawatt hour so from now we can calculate the average load average load is units generated divided by number of hours so unit generated is 37.8 megawatt hour divided by number of hours is 24 so it will give you the average load as 1.575 megawatt so finally we can calculate the load factor load factor is average demand divided by peak demand average demand is 1.575 megawatt and it is divided by 3 megawatt so it comes out to be 0 0.525 Okay, all right. Okay, John and John Fotel. Okay, nice. We have already solved this question. When you replied, four fifty seven. So just write down this problem, and if you have any doubt in this question you can ask me oh, shit. sorry
So now let's let us see the next part of this problem. So next part is determine the proper number and size of generating units to supply this load. So uh, the size of generating unit depends upon this maximum demand and it is asked about the proper number. So generally be having if we am selecting the one megawatt units then based on that we can find out the number on the select on the uh, on the basis of size of genetic units so we have we are having given as maximum demand maximum demand as 3 megawatt so if we are selecting one megawatt each then we can select the number of genetic units as 4 because we have to take one generation unit as a standby so if there is any faults or any problem occurs in one generating unit then we can operate the one standby unit so maximum demand is 3 megawatt therefore 4 generating units Genetic units operating one megawatt each may be selected. It is not fixed based upon the selection. If it is predefined, that rating is defined, so it will fluctuate. So, if we have taken the one megawatt generating unit capacity, then we can select four generating units. So what will happen during the maximum demand? During the maximum demand, during the maximum demand period, three units will operate. Three units will operate and one unit will remain as I just stand by so based on the size of generating units we have selected the number of generation units so if he is generating a station is 1 megawatt then we can select 4 generating units why because the maximum demand is 3 megawatt so always the generating units having the capacity to deliver the maximum demand and we have taken one extra unit so that it can it it, it, it just keep it it keep it as a standby so that if any during maloperation or any disturbances we just disconnect one unit and and put the standby unit as a operating And the next part is find the reserve capacity of the plant and plant factor. So plant capacity is how much? Be having four generating unit. So four into one megawatt. So plant capacity is four megawatt. And this reserve capacity is One unit is a standby, so four minus one, sorry, four minus three, because maximum demand is three megawatt. So reserve capacity is one megawatt. So the reserve capacity comes out to as one megawatt. And if you want to find out the plant factor. plant factor is actual energy produced actual 
actual energy produced divided by maximum plant rating. into number of hours number of hours so we have calculated the actual energy produced that is 37.8 megawatt hour and the maximum plant rating is 4 megawatt maximum plant rating is 4 megawatt and the number of hours is 24 so just put all these values so you will get plant factor maximum plant rating is 4 into 24 so it comes out to be 0 Okay, all right. So let us see last part of this question number 13. So last part is find out the operating schedule of genetic unit selected. So we need we have four genetic units and based on the this given data we need to find out that which genetic units will will be operating during which time. So for this we require the minimum demand from minimum demand minimum load demand. So from the data we can see that minimum load demand is 1 megawatt. So minimum load demand is 1 megawatt. So at least one unit is always operating. So we can write. One generating unit of 1 megawatt will operate for 24 hours because the minimum load demand is is 1 megawatt and the second generating unit of 1 megawatt will operate from So based, uh, we have we will seek uh, what is the data below two megawatt. So we can see that six m to ninety one point two megawatt, eight m to nine am whatever data above above one megawatt. So six m to six m to this nine pm. See this one sorry minimum load demand is 0 0.5 but for that also we have to run just at least one one generating unit so from this till 9 pm we are having value greater than one megawatt so another unit should be need to operate so second unit will run from 6 am to 9 pm that belongs to 15 hours 
and third generation unit of one megawatt will operate from greater than two megawatt so greater than two megawatt is 9 a.m. to 12 noon and maximum is 12, uh, greater than 2 megawatt so 9 a.m. to 12 noon and this 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. these data are these data are 9 a.m. to 12 noon greater than 2 megawatt so third unit need to operate at this time so you can write here just carefully observe the data of load demand from there you can find out the operating time for each generation unit 9 am to 12 noon and 2 pm to 6 pm and this is equal to 3 plus 4 7 hours so this is the solution for this question part 4 of question 13 I hope you all uh, able to understand this question. If anyone having doubt, they they can ask me. So let us see the question number 14. So a radial distribution feeder of 10 nodes total average total average daily energy consumption of the feeder is 5000 kilowatt hour. The daily load curve of the feeder is 0 0.75. Determine the daily load peak demand of the feeder. So from the load factor we can find out the load peak load demand of the feeder. So we know that load factor is already we have written down this formula so many times so load factor is average demand divided by peak demand So it is given a load factor is given as daily load factor. So we need to find out this average demand as it because it is given as energy consumption. So we need to divide it by 24. Total average daily energy consumption on the feeder is 5000 kilowatt hour. We can divide it by 24 hours so we can we can get the average demand in the terms of power in the terms of power in it so we are having load factor given as 0 0.75 average demand is given as 5000 divided by 24 and we need to find out the peak load demand of the feeder so peak demand will be five thousand divided by twenty four into zero point seven five so it comes out to be 277.78 kilowatt so the correct option for this question is a so how many of you are able to solve this question only john is replying the correct answer 
so i want you all of you try at least so that you will not face problem while solving the assignment and also in the final exam So now let us see the, see the next part, next problem. So question 15 is, there are two residential customers. Both the customers, both the customers have air conditioning systems of identical rating of two kilowatt. The customer one uses it daily from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. The customer two is a daily from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. And the daily energy consumption of the customer one due to air conditioning system is 12 kilowatt hour. And from this data, we can find out the average load demand. And the daily energy consumption of customer two due to air conditioning system is 10 kilowatt hour for the customer two. And customer one is for the customer one, it is given as 12 kilowatt hour. So assume that both the customers don't have any other loads. Assuming the daily load factor of the air conditioning system is 0 0.4. For the customer one is given as 0 0.4. Determine the peak demand of air conditioning system of customer one. So again, B, we will add the same formula. So we are having load factor as average demand divided by peak demand and in this question it is asked about the peak demand of of air conditioning system for customer one so let it write it as load factor for customer one so average demand, how can we, we can calculate? It is given as the daily energy consumption of the customer one due to air conditioning system is 12 kilowatt hour. So 12 kilowatt hour divided by 24, 24 hour. And from there we can find out the demand, peak demand. So load factor for customer one is given as 0 0.4 and here 12 divided by 24 it will give out 0 0.5 kilowatt so we will get peak demand for the customer one. Peak demand will be 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.4 it will give you as 1 divided by 0 0.8 so it will comes out to be as 1.525 kilowatt so the correct answer is c yes right the correct answer is C. So let us see the next part. Next part is assuming the daily load factor of a conditioning system for the customer customer 2 is 0.5. Determine the peak demand of the air conditioning system of the customer 2. So again we will use the same formula for this one also load factor for customer C2. Average demand divided by peak demand so 
so daily load factor is given as 0 0.5 so average demand we can uh, we have already given the question is that for the daily energy consumption of customer to due to air conditioning system is 10 kilowatt hour so we can write 10 kilowatt hour divided by 24 hour will give out the average demand in terms of power then we are having peak demand so from here we will get the peak demand for the customer too so peak demand will be 10 divided by 24 into 0 0.5 so if you do simplification you will get 0 0.833 kilowatt all right so the, course, the correct answer will be b 0 0.833 so there is one mistake 0 point this is not at 0 0.833 kilowatt so the next part is next part is the, if the diversity factor of the load is 1.5 determine the group peak demand due to the air conditioning system of both customers so we know that diversity factor is sum of individual peak demand sum of individual peak demand sum of individual peak demand divided by group peak demand so we have already calculated the peak demand for customer 1 and 2 just we need to add these both values and we are given having given as diversity factor as 1.5 so here we can also write this as in terms of summation form i is equal to 1 to n p i max and group demand p group max so 1.5 is given for the customer one we having 1.25 kilowatt 1.25 kilowatt plus 0 0.833 kilowatt and divided by divided by pgr max from there we can get pgr maximum is 2.083 meg kilowatt divided by 1.5 so you will get 1.3 388 that is approximately coming out to be 1.39 kilowatt so the correct option is D so many of you have replied the correct answer Dipender Singh, Payal Kumari nice So next part is continuous of, of this question if the contribution factor of the customer 1 is 0 0.5 determine the contribution factor of the customer 2 so I just want to give the option for this also so that let's take first option is 0 0.5 B option is 0 0.92 C option is 0 0.75 D option is 0 so we know that peak demand of the group is can be determined as peak demand of the group PGR max can be determined as
c1 into p1 max plus c2 into p2 max so p group max we have given 1.39 kilowatt so put this value 1.39 kilowatt plus c1 the contribution factor of the customer one is given as so this contribution factor of customer is denoted as c1 and the, we need to find out c2 so c1 is given as 0 0.5 into 1 p1 max is given as 1.25 so c2 into 0 0.8 33 kilowatt so from here you will get c2 into 0 0.833 1.39 minus 1.39 minus 0 0.625 so you will get c2 as 0 0.765 divided by 0 0.833 so we will get this value at 0.918 so correct option will be b so now let us move to the next problem next problem is a distribution feeder in in curse sir back sir back okay sir Thank you, sir. Okay. Pile and Anu both have given the correct answer for this question. So, this one is 0 0.92 contribution factor for this customer to next. Let us see the next next problem. So, distribution feeder incurs 5000 kilowatt hour of energy loss daily its energy loss during peak hour is 1000 kilowatt hour and the peak demand sustains for half an hour determine its loss factor so we know that loss factor is the ratio of average power loss to the loss occurring at the peak load demand so the loss factor we can write is at average power loss Average power loss divided by power loss at peak load demand. So this one is the loss factor. You can also write LSF. P loss average divided by P loss maximum. So this one is the loss factor formula of average average power loss divided by peak power loss at the power loss at the peak load demand or you can say peak power loss so first we will find this average power loss average power loss will be it is seen that distribution feeder takes 5000 kilowatt of energy loss daily so average power loss watt will be 5000 kilowatt hour divided by 24 hour so it will gives it will give you as 
थ्री थ्री किलो वाट नौ पावर लॉस एट पीक लोड डिमांड सो इट इज गिवेन एट दैट डू इट्स एनर्जी लॉस ड्यूरिंग पीक आवर इज वन थाउजेंड किलो वाट आवर वन थाउजेंड किलो वाट आवर सो हाउ मेनी फॉर हाउ मेनी आवर्स इट अकर्स इट अकर्स फॉर हाफ एन आवर सो नंबर ऑफ आवर इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव सो इट विल गिव यू गिव यू वैल्यू टू थाउजेंड किलो वाट सो लॉस फैक्टर कम्स आउट टू बी टू हंड्रेड एट पॉइंट थ्री थ्री किलो वाट डिवाइडेड बाय टू थाउजेंड किलो वाट सो इट्स वैल्यू कम्स आउट टू जीरो पॉइंट वन जीरो फोर सो करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज ए I hope all of you have noted down. Anu, John, both have given the correct answer. Fine, and Dipinder Singh. So let us see the next part. Next problem is a generating station has a maximum demand of 80 megawatt and a connected load of 150 megawatt. If the megawatt hour generated in a year is 4000 into 10 power 3, calculate the load factor. For load factor, first we need to calculate the average load. So. What are the values given? Given values are maximum demand, maximum demand is given as 80 megawatt, connected load, total connected load is 4000. units generated in a year units generated in a year is equal to 400 into 10 power 3 megawatt hour so we should also know that total number of hours in a year Total number of hours in a year T is given as eight thousand seven hundred sixty hour. Just it is descending order eight seven six. So you can remember easily. So is then we can find out the average load. Average load is unit generated in a year divided by total number of hours in a year. So 4000 into 10 power 3 divided by 8760. So it will give you value 45.662 megawatt. So the so finally we can calculate the load factor. Load factor L F is equal to average demand divided by peak demand. Average demand is forty-five point six six two megawatt. 
and peak demand is given in the question as 80 megawatt so this value comes out to 0 0.57 and the demand factor we know that demand factor is the ratio of maximum demand divided by total connected load so demand factor is maximum demand divided by total connected load maximum demand we have given as 80 megawatt and total connected load is given as 150 megawatt so the correct answer will be 0 0.533 is the demand factor for the generating station yes yes sir. your voice is cracking hello yes Nitish sir please ek bar back kijiyega jo question banaye the nahi dekhe Kon, question 16 17 are you not able to see the screen Yes, sir, they Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, our exam will be in that exam, sir, there is a question in that exam. I am generally what happens is that the question is given, the options will also be given. And the question will be similar to what we discussed and the sir is taught teaching in the means live tutor, sir is teaching in the video lectures and the, based on the assignment problems. And they generally what happens is the options will be also given in the problems. And it also happens that the means a one course uh, different questions are related to each other, like question number 17 having two parts. So it is also it is also like that. You may get this type of questions. We will discuss later. We have so much time. And I think we will go through uh, 12 sessions this is first session only so um, each saturday we are having this live tutorial session so we can discuss it uh, about the exam in the last session but generally what happens i i told you so next question is next problem is a sample distribution system is shown in figure one of the feeders supplies an industrial load with a peak of 2 megawatt and the other supplies residential load with a peak of 2 megawatt. So here you can see this in figure. So one of the feeder is supplies an industrial load with a peak of 2 megawatt. And the other feeder is supplying to a residential load with a peak of 2 megawatt. And combined peak demand is 3 megawatt. So that is group peak demand. So determine determine the diversity factor of the load connected to customer. So 
so you can write this one as that this one is p1 max and this one is p2 max for the second feeder so we know that diversity factor is sum of individual peak demand peak demand divided by group peak demand So you can write this as I to one to n P I max divided by P group max so here we are having P1 max plus P2 max and we need to find out the diversity of load connected transformer so we can tell it as transformer also max so diversity factor is we need to calculate so diversity factor will be p1 max is 2 megawatt plus p2 max is 2 megawatt 2 plus 2 4 megawatt and p group max is P transformer max is 3 megawatt so it will give you 1.333 so diversity factor will comes out to be 1.33 so next part of this question 18 is so first you write down this problem So next part is load diversity of the load connected to transformer. So load diversity B know that load diversity is equal to P load load diversity sum of individual maximum divide minus P group. So load diversity will be P1 max peak load demand of the first feeder and peak load demand of the second feeder minus peak load demand of the combined feeder combined transformer that the load connected to the transformer. So diversity factor will give us P1 is 2. 2 megawatt and P2 is 2 megawatt and and combined peak load is 3 megawatt so it will comes out to be 1 megawatt and the next part is coincidence factor of the load connected to transformer we know that coincidence factor is the is the reciprocal of is the reciprocal of diversity factor always remember this point so we can write this equation so here it is asked about the coincidence factor so coincidence factor is 1 by divided by diversity factor so one divided diversity factor we have already calculated one point so it will give you 0 
so many of you have given the answer Payal Kumari, Avinav Misra, Manish Kumar and Chandradhara so very very good all of you are trying so let us see the last last problem for this session no, I think one more question is there so two question left so question 19 is a substation supplies power to four feeders feeder a has six consumers whose individual daily maximum demands are 70 kilowatt 90 kilowatt 20 kilowatt 50 kilowatt 10 kilowatt and 20 kilowatt so there are six customers based on this this individual maximum demands are given while maximum demand for on the feeder is 200 is maximum on the feeder is 200 kilowatt for feeder a and feeder b supplies feeder b supplies four consumers whose daily maximum demands are 60 kilowatt 40 kilowatt 70 kilowatt and 30 and 30 kilowatt while maximum demand on the feeder b is 160 kilowatt feeder c and d have a daily maximum demand of 150 kilowatt and 200 kilo kilowatt respectively so while the maximum demand on the station is 600 kilowatt so determine the diversity factor of feeder a so we know that diversity factor is equal to sum of individual maximum demand divided by peak group peak demand or group peak demand So for feeder A, we have been giving the maximum demand on the feeder is 200 kilowatt, this one. And individual maximum demand, we can calculate that they have six customers, consumers. So 70 plus 90 plus 20 plus 50 plus 10 plus 20 this much kilowatt and group peak demand is 200 kilowatt so we can f add this term so it will give 260 kilowatt divided by 200 kilowatt so this will give you as 1.3 so let me see how many of you tried correctly so very good Payal and Anu both of you given the correct answer Nitish Kumar but uh, I think in this question I have not given option So this one is for feeder one so those who have written down those who have written down they can try to solve the diversity factor for feeder b so that is the next part of this problem so then uh, we need to find diversity factor for the feeder b so we can write the diversity factor for feeder b sum of individual maximum demand so in this in this question we have given that feeder b supplies four consumers having maximum demands are 60 kilowatt 40 kilowatt 70 and 30 kilowatt so just we write these values so sum of individual maximum demand will be 60 plus 40 plus 70 plus 30 
kilowatt and the group peak demand for this feeder so for this feeder b we have maximum demand is 160 kilowatt so divide it by 160 kilowatt so this will give you 200 kilowatt divided by 160 kilowatt so this value comes out to be 1.25 next part is diversity factor for the server station so the diversity factor for the server station how we can find we have we have uh, in this question it is already given the maximum demand for each feeder and a substation supplies power to four feeders so we have we can add the maximum demand of each feeders divided by total maximum demand of the substation so in this question all the values are given so the feeder eight is given as 200 kilowatt and for feeder b the peak demand is given as 160 megawatt and for feeder c and d and given it it is given as 150 megawatt and 200 kilowatt sorry not megawatt kilowatt 150 kilowatt and 200 kilowatt respectively and the while maximum demand on the station that is service station it is given as 600 kilowatt so this is the maximum demand on the whole station that is group peak demand of the station so this one is this is very nice question from there you can understand that how each feeder having different group peak demand and then at the next how the server station has different group peak demand so for for diversity factor of server station we, we can write that feeder a so feeder a maximum value plus feeder b maximum plus feeder c maximum plus peak load demand of feeder d maximum divided by total maximum demand on the server station so a server station maximum so for feeder A it is given as 200 kilowatt and for feeder 2 for feeder B it is given as 160 kilowatt and for feeder C and D it is given 150 kilowatt and 200 kilowatt respectively and for server station the maximum load demand is given as 600 kilowatt aggregated so just do the simplification you will get this diversity factor for service station is 1.183 how many of you have given answer as 40.66 i don't know how now we will solve the last problem for this tutorial session that is question 20 the question 20 is given as peak demand of a generating station in 90 megawatt and load factor is 0 0.60 the plant capacity factor is 0 0.50 determine the daily energy produced so how we can calculate daily energy produced we can since load factor is given and peak demand is given so from there we can find out the average load demand 
and from there we just multiply with number of hours we will get the daily energy produced so maximum demand peak demand is given as 90 megawatt load factor is given as 0 0.60 load factor is given as average demand divided by peak demand so load factor is 0 0.6 average demand is unknown and divided by peak demand sorry peak demand is also known so just write it as 90 megawatt so average demand will be average demand will be 90 into 0 0.6 90 into 0 0.6 megawatt so this will be 54 megawatt so but in this question it is asked for daily energy produced so daily energy produced will be daily energy produced will be average load average demand into 24 average load demand is 54 megawatt into 24 this comes out to be 1 1296 megawatt hour and now we need to find the installed capacity of plant so for installed capacity of plant we can use the plant factor in this question it is also given as the plant capacity factor so from there we can find out the maximum plant rating so plant factor plant utilization capacity factor is given as 0 0.5 and actual energy produced actual energy produced by the generating station is also be have found out actual energy produced is found out 1296 megawatt hour so we can find out the maximum plant rating from the plant capacity factor so this plant factor is plant capacity factor is actual energy produced during time interval actual energy produced divided by maximum plant rating maximum plant rating into t so plant factor is given as 0 0.5 actual energy produced is given as 1296 megawatt hour this maximum plant rating we need to find out maximum plant rating into t is given as 24 hour so you will get maximum plant rating as 12.96 divided by 0 0.25 into 24 so you will get 108 megawatt so the 
install capacity of generating station will be install capacity will be same same that is maximum plant rating 108 megawatt So the next problem is uh, the next part of this last problem is reserve capacity of plant. So we have find out the installed capacity and we know that the maximum demand on this generating station from from there we can find out the reserve capacity. Reserve capacity is that is the subtraction between the installed capacity minus uh, between is between the subtraction between the reserve cap, uh, installed capacity and peak demand. So reserve capacity you can write. installed capacity minus peak demand is the subtraction between installed capacity and peak demand is called reserve capacity so installed capacity we have calculated as 108 so this one is also important So nice, Manisha and Anu both Avinav Payal. They have given correct answer. So very good. So one install capacity will be 100 minus 108 minus 90 peak demand. So this will comes out as 18 megawatt. And the last part is utilization factor. So, utilization factor we can define as the ratio of maximum demand of the system divided rating rated system capacity. Maximum demand of the system divided by rated capacity. That is the utilization factor. So maximum demand we know that 90 megawatt and we having rated capacity as that we have calculated from the plant utilization factor plant capacity factor sorry so that comes to 108 megawatt so it will give you 0 0.833 It's better to write rated system capacity. Rated system capacity. Okay, all right. So we have finished the all question for this tut today's tutorial session. Now, whatever you have in doubts, you can ask me. Is there any doubt? If you don't have any doubt, then we can meet 
in the next on the next Saturday at the same time four o'clock for the second tutorial session Anu Chaudhary do you have any doubt you have raised your hand I will share this uh, uh, PDF of PPT and the recording of this today's lecture on the this uh, swam portal so you can also get access after one or two days okay I would like to thank you all for attending this today's session that's all thank you thank you sir thank, thank you. you sir